So the techniques that we use they're not easily understood. It takes specialized expertise to determine. It's also very difficult to assess differences between work done in one laboratory and work done in another laboratory. And I'll give you a, the best example for the work that I do in DNA damage. The very first paper to come out and assign DNA damage to exposure to microwave frequencies was done by Henry Lai and N.P. Singh. And they published their work in 1950. And that paper set the industry on its head, really rocked everybody back to the point of finding ways to fight back and counter the potential damage that this paper could do to the industry. Well, Motorola funded a number of replication studies. And one of the replication studies they funded was at a university in St. Louis, at Washington University. So again, unless you're an expert in the field, if you read the papers, it would appear that what the group in St. Louis did was the exact same study that Henry Lai and N.P. Singh did. Not so. There are subtle differences in, in the techniques that were employed. If you're not familiar enough with the work, if you don't do work in the area, at face value it says, yeah, this study could not replicate this study. Well, they weren't done the same. If you don't do the studies the same, it's difficult to compare one with the other. Or you compare one with the other with the understanding that certain differences were made. Everything in perspective. It's difficult to know how well studies are designed. Let's look at contrary data in a couple other areas. The epidemiology studies, for instance. Some of the very early epidemiology studies that came out were very, very comforting to folks because they said, look, use your cell phone for two, three years, no increase in brain tumors, without understanding that brain tumors may take a longer period of time to develop. Now that we're getting different epidemiology, we're getting epidemiology from people who have used cell phones for much longer periods of time, the data is coming out quite a bit different. But on the surface, again, if people don't understand the finer points of scientific design, experimental design, one study can be accepted as the same as the other, and then dealing with contrary data becomes difficult. It's the same thing looking at animal studies, where animals have been exposed to fields of various types, with the end point being tumor development. Now, what I did when I was in California, testifying on behalf of Tom Hayden, who was introducing a cell phone bill, what folks at industry had said was, look, there's all of these animal studies, and if you look at all of these animal studies, there's no increase in brain tumors whatsoever. And the only response to that is, boy, if you understand how those studies were designed, those studies were never designed to look at brain tumors in the first place. They were designed to look for totally different things. Did the legislators know to ask? No. I'm up there whispering in Tom Hayden's ear, and Tom Hayden is starting to shout at him, and they decided they didn't want to deal with science at the time. But the point is you have to really understand the finer points and look deeper into some of these studies to understand how they were designed, with what endpoints they were designed to measure, okay, to determine what sort of validity they have. <clears throat> 